So I'm here with uh, three colleagues from LIDEC, very experienced people. May I introduce Mr. Dr. Yashinsky, Lee Price, and Sudi Agujo. So um, we are here from all around the world. Mr. Yashinsky here with me in Stuttgart, who is our head of global business development. Lee Price in Warwick, UK, our commercial director and uh, managing director Sudi Agoto in Pune, India. They all together have decades of experience in facility management, um, technical services, the automotive industry, manufacturing industries, and they are here to share their experiences with you and answer your questions. Um, so I would like to um, go through the agenda real quick with you. Um, first, Mr. Yashinsky will give you a global overview about the production restart worldwide and the planned activities. And then the colleagues will share their experience, tips and ideas for production restart from Europe, UK and India. In the end, we will have time for a Q&A session with you and uh, feedback from the participants. Please allow me some housekeeping details. Everybody can use the chat function that's on the right bottom <laughs> of your screen. And you can put in your questions, which will be answered um, as we can at the end, towards the end of the webinar. If you want to speak up personally, please raise your hand virtually. There is a hand symbol also near to the chat function. And then we will open your microphone and your camera. For your information, we will record this webinar, but only the presentation session. The Q&A session will, of course, not be recorded for privacy reasons. So again, thanks for joining us. And I would now like to hand over to Mr. Dr. Yashinsky. Thanks. Thanks, Marion. Good afternoon, good morning, also from my side. It's really great, and for us, an absolute surprise that so many of you joined the session. We have more than 200 participants from India, Americas, Europe, and the UK. We hope that we can give you some guidance and some tips, and we would like to share our experience that we made now in the last weeks uh, with you. You might ask, who is LIDEC? What is their experience? and their background in manufacturing, and especially uh, in production restart after COVID-19 breakdown. LIDEC is a global engineering and industrial service specialist with more than 20,000 own experts. We are day by day servicing more than 300 plants on four continents. We, as, the, as LIDEC, as the serve four different um, industries. On the one side, you see there on the left, the automotive industry, and that's our core business. Then we have a lot of experience and a lot of customers in the supplier industry, in the heavy truck, buses, and transport industry, and the manufacturing industries, that's especially consumer goods, electronics, and food and beverages. And from these industries, you see, alone in Asia, we serve more than 90 plants in um, India and in China. Um, on this slide, you see, what is the current situation? More than two thirds of our customers and the customer plants were in a lockdown mode. But the, the development and how quickly they returned is absolutely different by region. On this chart, you can see how many of the plants that we have currently under service were in lockdown as a, in the time period before March 17th and today. Take Europe here as an example. Uh, from the 101 plants that we track um, and about closed or not closed in our COVID-19 tracker, 75 
79 finally went into lockdown so far. But this week, end of this week, still 18 of them are in lockdown mode. You also see there, you see the other two areas. What does these charts show? The plants are normally in a lockdown period for six to eight weeks. All lockdowns in a region start very, very soon, mainly within a two weeks time frame. Europe here was first, at the time China was already back, was first, then the US, then UK, Brazil, and then India. But the restart and how long it takes to restart that differs by region and by customers. In Europe, for example, you can see it's going slowly, step by step by step, start on Easter and until today, um, the plants are going returning. America, they stayed all together in a lockdown mode and then in a very short time period, they bring back. But later, in India now, we are, you see, we can gain a lot of experience already from the other regions where we also supported the um, our customers. What does this mean now? What are the different stages that require different actions? We uh, see this and uh, with three stages. Stage one is the preparation of the restart and also the first couple of weeks. That's to prepare the, uh, for the return for work. That means to make and give the people a safe environment. After a couple of weeks, normally two to four weeks, then the plants and the plant management comes up with a different understanding and a different um, action plan. It's we put on the under the umbrella, keep and maintain the momentum and optimize. In the stage three, this is now the first plants are in the stage. It's new normal for them. What does it mean? Very often production volumes are lower than um, um, upfront. See, this means new normal, means also physical distancing will stay. Higher hygienic routines will stay. Costs will become a real big issue and right sizing also of the plant staff. And part of this is now also automation of manual work. What to do? What can we recommend? Let's start with stage one. Stage one, the plant means, means to get and the impression for the people that the work is safe, that the working place are safe. The question is, how does a pandemic process framework look like? What in the hygienic focus shall we take? What can we learn in the manufacturing from other industries? And finally, besides all the, the first two things, the machines have to be ready again. Where are the priorities? What are specific tips? I would like to hand over to my colleague um, in the UK, to Lee. Lee has a lot of experience as a commercial manager. He is in all the discussions with our customers. And also now, Lee, can you share with us a little bit now after the restart, what happened and what can we learn? Thank you, Christoph. Yeah, of course, no problem at all. Um, I think it, in the first instance, if I can just uh, put it into some context in the UK, um, we set out under the, the same three phases around planning, preparation, and particularly the performance of our activities. Um, that's a framework which we adopt, whether it's in the manufacturing space or whether it's in another sector that we operate in today. And it's prevalent, whether it be food, beverage, or more importantly, transport, which I'm going to share with you in a few seconds. Um, I think for me, if we concentrate on the middle line, it's around communication, um, particularly the hygiene standards and how that relates to the individuals that will be interacting with the working environment. Um, for us, um, if you just click to the next slide, um, we've adopted that framework, uh, particularly in our transport sector. So to give that some context, um, we haven't seen a ramp down. Um, we've continued to service those environments, those, those uh, environments that have depots for vehicles, 
um, outside of the manufacturing industry. So we've had to, um, we haven't been afforded the opportunity to ramp down and ramp up. We've had to reconfigure our activities um, pretty much immediately. Um, so we've had to accelerate that process somewhat. So to give that some context, with over 15 depots, um, over a thousand vehicles that are in those depots, over 120 staff uh, and thousands of activities. And more importantly, uh, those vehicles are, are interacting with tens of thousands of the public across the UK today. Um, we had some guidance from the government. Um, clearly that was around cleaning frequencies um, and increasing deep cleans, but more importantly, hygiene hotspots. But I can't iterate enough that this is not just about cleaning. This is about, this is about instilling confidence. Um, and that's something that will, will be a constant and, and consistent challenge throughout ramp up, through into normal operations and the new norm that we see it today, whether it be in manufacturing or our transport sectors. So how have we, uh, have we reconfigured that? So right at the front end is our working priorities. So completely reassessing the specificational design, um, the working activities of our staff, how that relates to how we interact with the vehicles, the environments and the plants that we operate in, um, and reassessing those priorities on a daily, weekly and hourly basis. We do that in setting one, I guess, fundamentally important, which is the PPE. Um, and these are just a very much a snapshot of um, the, the, the paperwork and the, the processes that we've adopted. So you can see there increasing PPE. Um, and again, the, uh, the plant, the equipment, uh, the consumables that we're using, um, and I, can, I can't reinforce enough that that's been a huge challenge, as I'm sure many of our healthcare businesses across uh, the UK have experienced as well. Um, but enhancing that equipment, again, gives confidence to our staff that we're managing their well-being, which is at the forefront of our minds um, as we interact with them on a daily basis. What does that mean in principle? Um, for us, it wasn't just about our staff. Um, on the left-hand side, um, and again, just to give you some metrics across the globe, um, figures were suggesting that the high risk um, people in, in industry were primarily uh, security guards. Secondary to that were taxi drivers. And third was our bus drivers. So the rate of infection and the spread of the virus was very much focused on uh, the bus drivers that we had within the transport sector. You can see by the graphics in, that, in our process documentation uh, that we had a high focus on touch point cleans around the drivers. Um, and just as a, 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 I guess, a tip, we also provided post cleans on each of the driver cabins, um, a small indelible uh, seal um, that showed and demonstrated to the driver that the, the environment had been clean. So if he approached the vehicle and that seal had been broken, uh, it gave him a very clear indication that the, uh, the cab needed disinfecting and cleaning before he entered. So again, that visual representation giving their staff our customers' staff confidence that the work area was safe for to, to occupy. We couldn't ignore the public. Um, if you just skip back, sorry, just for one second. Um, the public interaction uh, and providing clear confidence that actually the, the buses that were, that were in operation were, were clearly and had evidently cleaned. We were also uh, looking to provide um, mobile cleaners, which were actually on the routes of the vehicles. Uh, and that's something that we're in constant discussions with as well. That gives you, like I say, a very small snapshot of uh, some of the hints and tips that we got from um, our transport sector. Uh, and these just really contextualize some of that feedback, which for us is about live communications. Uh, and as much as you try and implement a very lean and efficient process, please don't underestimate that tasks will take longer with the increased PPE and the working environments that we find our people, our staff and our customers in. Uh, communication is absolutely key. Um, and our leadership teams are on site. Again, providing that confidence to our staff um, that the working environment is, is safe to use. Uh, cost control and the management of value and le leveraging that value will consistently and constantly be a challenge for us. And being realistic about the timeframes in which you can deploy these activities. And for us, it's about simplifying processes and not making things too complicated to allow a, a rapid response and execution across the, across the portfolio. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Lee, for sharing these ideas and also the insights from the UK. I think that also there for all of us, there are some really good tips from the UK. And for me, a first takeaway, many 
customers, are and many plants managers ask and want what are fresh ideas from abroad. Everybody knows a little bit what his peer are doing, what has done in their own company. But here in this case, for also for us, the transportation industry that has not locked down everything but had to work under these conditions. And also food producers are excellent benchmarks for manufacturing plants now for planning the restart after lockdown and for the people. Now I would like also to ask Sudhir is he, about uh, the, some insights from India. Sudhir is, he, is our was a plant manager for many, many years in India for many automotive manufacturers before joining Lidec. Now, from, he said, from a different, two different perspectives. Le, uh, Sudhir, do you have some specific tips that you can share with us how to organize the restart? Uh, thank you, Christoph and Lee. Uh, for sure, I have actually pulled out two or three uh, slides to share with you. And as you rightly pointed out, uh, the India curve is the lagging curve. Most of my colleagues and those MSME plants who are trying to open up today struggle because uh, the demand is still not there and capacity utilization stays a big concern. So even as they open up today, tomorrow, the, the challenge is how to run the plant. So I have picked up some uh, slides. The first one, I guess, has to be COVID. So uh, for the MSME, especially the small plants, uh, which are many out here in India, the suppliers, the co component guys, they need to first form an emergency team to tackle COVID issues. This uh, we could be a cross-functional team and maybe one of the directors on board. A quick reacting team which uh, goes through the COVID issues at the plant level and is the link between management and the shop floor teams. This team also is in touch with the external agencies, the hospitals, the police, the rules which change from the government. And believe me, in India, the rules change every day. <laughs> so it's a nightmare. And they're still in lockdown on top. It's the longest lockdown, I guess, amongst all countries, I'm told, India's. So it's a big challenge and this team also has to then contend with the suppliers and the contractors, all the peripheral staff and be a central point for communication. So it's very important, even if the plant is small, guys, please form this response team and activate it. The next uh, thought was uh, in any plant, typically there are four areas which uh, kind of uh, uh, interact with each other. And these are the four here. The first is within the plant. So you have to uh, look at your teams before you start restart the plant, whether your maintenance team is ready to look at the health of the equipment, whether production planning team is ready to support the new plans. They'll surely be nowhere close to what the management desires. Might be one tenth or one twentieth of the capacity, I guess. So you have to change your plans, your functional needs in the first box here. The second box is critical, which we talked in terms of customer demand. So I was talking to a head of a, a large OEM automotive, and he says, well, to, to show the government, I have started my plant, but there's no car sales. So I can build 6,000 cars a day amongst my plants, but then where do I sell them? So customer is king. So you have to first uh, link, whether you want to pump it into the yards or into the dealerships, so what's your proposal on the, the, the product you produce? Third box here is about the contractors, which is where I think Lee mentioned some people, sanitization contractors, maintenance contractors, yeah, even production people who are on contract, the supply chain contractors, and plus the peripheral, the canteen, and the guard kind housekeeping services. These you have to touch base, maybe downsize them as per the need of the plant, maybe upsize them if you have enough sanitization need somewhere. So that's another concern and area to check before you jump in and start your plant. And the last one is, of course, the, the suppliers to you, where we talk of raw materials, components, all the material which comes into your plant and typically handled by purchase guys. So that also you have to link it to the supply chain, the customer chain and the plant production capacities. Having shown you this chart, I guess uh, I'll touch base something on the health check for the equipment, which is my favorite subject. 
and uh, we love to do that as well and as uh, christoph mentioned we have about at least 40 odd plants in india where we do these kind of services so this is where we we advise uh, health check by the maintenance team of the oem so if you have this auto plant or a, or a, or, a, or a paint plant or a pharma plant you always have a maintenance team it's either oem or on contract or a combination so that's where you have to check the equipment before you just go switch on the stuff and to share a live example from a friend of mine here in a msme plant he says uh, when he went to the line and they're trying to start a machine it won't start they discovered over the last 8 weeks of shutdown the rodents there's a the back of the plant is a is a rice field or something <laughs> rodents from there had entered the plant the cables are all gone kind of chewed in. so they have to change all the cables uh, luckily when they switched on the it didn't go into safety mode or issues but that's one area you need to check only for each large equipment or critical equipment there are uh, spots there are checklists available for example here's a slide from uh, the ahu system most plants have this so if you are not using the ahu fans the shaft tends to buckle and you know buckling means vibration and then it can even cause into a spin and disaster for the fan so you need to check for this kind of stuff you need to look for uh, again the ahu the filters they pick up a lot of dust over the two months shut down and these will sag and fold up and you'll have all dust coming in so you need to clean these so for each equipment there's a checklist the the point here is uh, you need to tell your maintenance team to thoroughly check equipment before something hits you worse than what covid has done so far it could be a safety issue at the plant and uh, with that i guess uh, i can share more because, but in the interest of time christopher will hand it back to you Hey, so dear, many, many thanks also for these excellent tips, you see. And I think for all of us, a second takeaway is besides the people, also the machinery is important and needs health check. Yeah? And uh, therefore, don't forget to take care about the health of your machinery and equipment to avoid stoppages during the restart and the, re uh, the relaunch. Now, you see, when we move ahead, uh, to the next stage. That's then the plant is running uh, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Um, and uh, then more and more, um, it's becoming normal practice. Now, some other topics pop up. One thing is example, how can the plant organization be stabilized under new, the new work environment? And outside the plant, many shops, restaurants, bar, hotels, they have reopened. The sense of urgency for keeping the distance and the very high hygienic standards is deteriorating. People want to return to old habits. But the plant management and the, uh, the decision makers, they know if there will come COVID cases into the plant, the, author the authorities will close the plants immediately. Therefore, how, the question is, how can the discipline be maintained and secured on this high level from the starting point? There are also a lot of good ideas. I would like to put your attention to two of them where we make good, um, good results. The one, the first is participation. Make your employees to become participants and engaged in instead of a not my issue syndrome. An excellent and very pro practical example that we see now and that we experience here are keep your workplace clean kits. You see this, the design on the left side, how we do this. Uh, these kits are placed later on in meeting rooms, in offices, and other public places um, and shall be used by the employees by themselves and remind them that this is, you see, a, you can see on the right side, a practical example that we developed for an automotive manufacturer here in Stuttgart. Yeah, that this is the way how we have done this. 
And it's also very important that you clarify upfront in the plant uh, the chemical usage, that you streamline it, that you harmonize it between the different shops and that you organize a process, logistics process that it works. Another um, um, point that we get in contact very often is coming from manufacturing engineering. In the first stage, it's all about going physical distancing done through masks or face shields. Now, after some time, the people are asking, see, what can we do there differently? The question is, can we redesign, especially assembly lines? And you can see here a van assembly line. Uh, we have a software solution that, um, that analyzes the different distances. And you see this, whether it's in blue or those that are in yellow, that's okay. The, uh, the people who work together in these um, in the red marked areas, that's where the line has to be rearranged, uh, uh, redesigned, or maybe through the line feeding has to be changed. Intention is also ways to avoid that have that your employees have to work face masks, face shields, or masks because that's getting more and more difficult if it lasts longer. Now, Sudhir, again, as a former plant manager, do you have a specific tip also for this stage for the production zones? Okay, Christopher. Uh, again, uh, I have jotted down some points. Let me pull out that slide. Okay, so first, as I said earlier as well, and we all know the capacities are down. So typically in any production plant, you have planning of people to the capacity. And that's totally going haywire today. So as many of the plants start up, you realize you have people you need to reposition. For example, on an assembly conveyor, you may have a guy who used to bolt up the steering wheel of the car and torque it up to the proper torque. And that's his cycle time job. Now, the speed of the line is probably 20%. So he has to do five times the job, not just the steering wheel. He has to do other three or four jobs to make the line stable and the commercial aspects good for the plant. So that's a retraining and a rebalancing thing, which it's a huge task, trust me. Assembly guys would know that it's a huge task, but that has to be done before you get the people onto the line. You have to, you may have to retrain him and quickly and put him on the line to take care of multiple jobs at the same time. Whereas his friend may not have been able to come to the line because he may have gone home or fallen sick or could be even a downsizing issue for some plants. So that's a big challenge uh, for production people today to rebalance the job. The second, uh, you already mentioned, Christoph, is the red zone and the social distancing. While you are running the plant, you have to ensure those aspects. Else, the factory inspector would walk in and shut the plant. So it could be a disaster as well. So you have to have the COVID response team maybe watching the plant guys, auditing them, looking for PP adherence, looking for uh, social distancing. And again, just to some more to add sanitization, disinfected infection of the plant. Again, the rodents and those guys also are in the plant, not just the bats who have got us COVID. Don't let the rodents take over and get, get us rodent or rodento or some other new disease. So that has to be taken care of, the pest control. The uniforms, I, I advise to many that you should not allow usage of same uniform every day. Even though it's a pain for the operator, ask him to wash every day and use a different uh, dress. Shoes cover if you can deploy for your people, it helps. Avoid centralized air conditioning, you know how the airflow can, the virus can move. Avoid uh, air conditioning where you can. And uh, have a medical room, a quarantine zone, because again, another plant nearby in Pune tried to start three days back, but they found a guy with fever, and COVID, and then the government came and shut the plant. This guy, the entrepreneur, is crying. He started and had to shut in two days or something because there's no quarantine zone and the, the infection might have gone to all the others. So have a quarantine zone, a medical uh, system available next to you, or at least on-call basis. These are some important tips and uh, also avoid uh, 
small teams working at night over time isolated place working avoid as much because anyway the capacity requirements are down so you can manage to work without these that's all i had to share christopher okay so dear many thanks for these helpful insights yeah and um also see and for me again as a takeaway is even after the restart there should be dedicated teams in the plant who observes uh, the behavior of the people and also looks for technical solutions um, like what Sudhir said in the night shift or in the reused line feed. Now, you see, when we move ahead yeah, afterwards, a plant uh, gets summer into new normal, what we call new normal. That's after six weeks, sometimes after three months. Now, the first plants have started already here after Easter. They are already in production situation, what I would call therefore non-new normal. But they operate under new working conditions, very high cost pressure, um, very often spent cuts and freeze of investments, especially investments for new equipment and machinery, and demands to keep the physical distancing. This means to look for automation, digitization, and new investment models and service concepts, and also right-sizing. Yeah. Now, lean. See, in England, uh, the plants are already back. What are um, good ideas that you are currently discussing with your customers in the plants what are the hottest topics? Thank you, Christoph. Um, yeah, I, I think if I can share with you, um, and first and foremost, before I go into any detail, um, the digitization of our services, our people, uh, and our infrastructure is very much part and parcel of the LEADEC OS platforms that we operate across the globe. So the, the, um, the slide that you can see there is not something that's just been defined or created for the response to COVID. It's something that's part and parcel of our service proposition. I think I, I noticed one question that popped up from somebody around uh, how we're, what are we doing around the food environment? And, and I, I give you an indication, the top left hand corner, um, the intervention of uh, HMI, um, particularly on food environments, the, um, the restriction of actually allowing people onto site so where in any environment where we're not allowed to go onto the platform onto production um the intervention of hmi is going to be a very useful tool in the future um i think it also will um allow us to you know for argument's sake where we're having to bring people in from outside of the uk where quarantine issues may be a challenge um i think where we can place the hmi on site and give remote uh, engineering advice and support I think will uh, be a very useful opportunity for us in any of the manufacturing environments that we operate. Um, digital recording of facilities on the right hand side I can tell you now that um, two particular customers we are looking at a, um, a remote working to provide auditing and compliance activities where we don't appear on site and they utilize our platform um, to do remote auditing so again that's something that's very much prevalent in the discussions that we're having. Um, We've got our drones serviced, and I'll, again, I'll be honest, that would primarily have been associated with roof inspections across the industry, um, where obviously health, uh, I guess, health and safety restrictions allow us. We can provide that service inside a plant, so we can actually see above plant equipment and infrastructure to do those inspections without the need for us to go into the plant. Um, I'll come back to robots in a few seconds, but for us, um, the intervention of robots and providing services within the facilities management industry, uh, I think isn't widely used enough. And I think it's something we'll also see being more prevalent in uh, the services in the future. Um, Condition-based monitoring and, and prescriptive IoT platforms um, have been part and parcel of industry for some time. I think for me, um, the pandemic will be a kickstart that the UK particularly is needed um, to provide more digitally focused solutions and services as part of the, their, their service offering. Thanks. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Uh, I think these are also great examples. And um, I would like to add there, you see, um, 
we have developed a dedicated team, this our smart manufacturing group, that are developing together with our customers, also with some startups and R&D companies, specific solutions for the factory of today and the future. In India, for example, we are working together with an Indian specialist on predictive maintenance and artificial intelligence solutions. If you are interested in these things, please contact Sudhir or Lee directly. But I would like to add one thing to this, what Lee said already, and that's the feeding, and that's the canteens. Many canteens are currently still closed in the manufacturing plants. And we have now developed a solution together with an automotion, automotive plant here to use the small robots, and you see an example, one type there on the right side, to use small robots to bring food from the canteen, from the kitchen itself, directly to employees where they work. Yeah. See, this is a specific idea how you can automize things that were done in the past manually to avoid physical um, closity as between people. One other question here in this, uh, that's going to Sudhir. Sudhir, you see, also customers ask us about outsourcing. Is outsourcing more attractive for a plant management to consider now or not? You see, what is your view from an Indian perspective and the discussions with your customers, Sudhir? Yeah, good question, Christoph. Whosoever is asking that, but uh, my view is after the COVID, uh, the inquiries have gone up. So what's happening? Uh, because remember, employees for a company are overheads. It's all overhead, and a lot of people are now learning the wrong way that overheads. If you carry too many, you can be in trouble. So we are getting calls uh, for uh, supporting. Uh, downsizing of plants example uh, here's a team of 860 people maintenance people uh, the plant uh, head is now looking at outsourcing that team of 60 and by that what company like uh, who's into maintenance could do if they have to downsize they could take them to another plant a new plant opening up but if it's overhead for the, the oem it's very tough to get rid of it so whether it's production services or whether it is uh, maintenance or whether it is supply chain services, all these, the demand for outsourcing is going to grow because the focus will be lean down your own team. That's my gut feeling. Thanks, Sudhir. Again, also thanks, Lee, for your participation and really your input from the different areas and from the different regions and also sharing some really good input and practical takeaways for our tips how to manage the situation in the plants. And also, you see, um, for each and everybody, for all of us, it's now the question, how can we use these ambitious times um, to become more competitive and then later on even grow again, maybe faster than competition with these my remarks, I would like to hand over back to Marion to give even everybody the possibility to ask questions that we will then answer. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Christoph, Lee, and Sudhir. And um, yeah, we already got um, some questions in the chat. Um, for those of you who are um, still thinking about your questions, just use the chat box or decide to raise your hand. Um, so I will close the presentation now. And um, I will start with uh, the first question. And um, I will um, give that question to uh, Sudhir. Um, the question is from um, Arun Gospalvatni and it goes, what are some of the measures that you have taken in food manufacturing areas? So, so dear, from your vast experience, what can you say about measures in food manufacturing? Well, it's a, it's not an easy one, but then food manufacturing is all about process con control. So when you get to food, it's hygiene and process control. 
if you can manage these two aspects in a food industry you are all set now when i talk of process control it is strictly adhering to sops and processes and when i talk of hygiene i think as lee mentioned the sanitization the disinfecting of the plant and the gloves for the people and all the rest the hygiene aspects so till the the food is properly canned in the right can the quality control all that comes under hygiene or the processes control so if you can manage these two i guess that's the need of the hour because if you mess up even on one of these your whole food chain could crash thank you very much um um before i come to the next question i ask my producers whether they can prepare to give um to voice to one of the participants who has a quiz question for uh, mr sudia maybe we can take that you can take that later and um in the meantime, while we um, prepare for opening the mic, I will have another question for Lee Price, please. And it's from uh, Shiripati uh, Chawali. So excuse my poor Indian pronunciation. <laughs> and asking, being a production person, how to build confidence in teams when manpower number is less? Um, how to build confidence in these times? Yeah. It's a, it's a very good question. Um, I think for me, um, it, it's about communication very, very simply. Um, you, in demonstrating, and you saw some of the graphics that we have in our processes, um, I, I think giving people the confidence that the working environment is suitably managed against the set criteria. Um, and that communication can't just be single pointed. It needs to be a constant process. Um, I'd also suggest that you need to be um, sensitive to people's thoughts and their well-being simply because um, the environment can change and I think you need to be objective about changing the processes and procedures to do to suit different parts of the manufacturing process um, and once that's been applied um, I think for me it's also about leadership representation and making sure that the management teams um, daily bulletins daily interaction and um, to just reinforce and really test and make sure that the hearts and minds of the individuals um, are are in the right place so we, we can retain the people in, in the work environment. Thank you very much, Lee. And now go to the next question. So I have to scroll down to the chat and I look down here. And this question goes, how do supply chain area restart services work? Is there's a lot of inventory lying, like sanitization? I think um, this was the question who should also go to Sudhir Gurtu. So Sudhir, please, would you answer how do supply chain area restart services work as there is a lot of inventory lying? Um, Sudhir, you have to unmute your mic. We can't hear you. Just one second. Thanks for meeting ah, before, but now we need you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll restart. Uh, uh, Marion, uh, good question. But I guess the supply chain guy, the guy who's asking is a supply chain expert. But actually, the, the problem is not, not supply chain. The, if you see the root cause, it's all about the demand. That's missing. So the whole chain is clogged. So uh, the supply chain is also has to be, uh, you know, unshackle that can only happen once the demand starts so take the car industry the easiest example when the cars start selling today the dealers have enough inventory the oem yards are full right so until that comes out of the yards out of the dealership to the consumer the the whole chain is clogged so it's a very tough one and i guess unfortunately there is no magic wand but it will take a few months before uh, things go normal, I guess. 